Hello everyone, today I'm going to present to you the topic of our paper a Categorization of BIM Related Legal Issues and I am Fatih Kaya, I prepared this work with Ms. Akçemete and Mr. Bugen. So let me start with an introduction, uh, the outline of our paper. I will start with a brief introduction and I will talk about current state of legal, of, um, legal issues regarding to BIM. Then I'll move on to methodology and tell you how the categorization of this, the problem is determined. Then I will give detail of this categorization and potential legal issues part. And then finally, I will conclude my presentation with a further study part. As the projects get complicated day by day, the need for a more comprehensive and effective way of working within the construction becomes more dominant. Having BIM, Building Information Modeling, system utilized in project ensures some, of, some number of advantages, as you know. For such reasons, engineering and contractors all over the globe now utilizing BIM more, and BIM is getting more popular. As MBA's BIM report in 2020 indicates, there are 73% of people that you are now using BIM. But uh, collaboration is the key for, key for BIM's BIM success. In order to create functional working collaboration, there should be a set of standardized way of working and mutual trust between parties. Hence, the role of protocols and standard uh, form of contracts become more significant. But although people's anticipation of legal issues you know, increasing, it is still one of the most important adoption issues regarding the BIM. Uh, as BIM had penetrated in the sector, researchers have conducted uh, many works and surveys on this issue, uh, on this area, we can say. But all of them it identifies different potential issues in different categories. In this study, a unique categorization of potential legal issues will be done by investigating other publications. And as a final remark, the number of case law in BIM that the council will be mentioned to encourage some further studies. So when we move on to methodology part, it, um, there were 55 publications until 2020 from Fun at all to work. They, they, they you know, summarize the whole picture until that time. But uh, after this, from 2018 to 2020, in these in two years, we looked for beam legal contract keywords in Scopus. And after an elimination of publications that are not directly related to and constrict legal issues, a total number of 13 publications are found between these two years. Although all research and authors in these papers use different titles by explaining the problems they put forth, the mentioned problems can be categorized under six, ca six categories. So in potential legal issues part, I will give you these six categories that we put forward. And they are, as you can see here, standards of care, intellectual property rights and model ownership, contractual relationship and responsibility of parties, coordination and control of the design, legal stages of BIM, and finally, the sixth category, 2D, 3D utilization. So when we look for the six categories in this regard, by giving more importance to the issue mentioned by a considerable number of authors and investigating the work of Fun et al. in 2018, at a subtitle level, the subjects included in all the research studies can be examined under the six categories. All the publications refer to issue of standard of care, for example, under different titles such as policy and consideration. They can be related to C1. C2, which is the topmost issue in the literature regarding the BIM, on the other hand, mentioned under almost the same title as IP rights or copyright. While C3 is mainly referred to, un to under liability related titles. C4 is mostly stipulated under managemental issue. 
The legal stage of PIM model and 2D 3D utilization are the last mentioned issues and each paper causes a different aspect of these categories. Also the weight of these categories are given, uh, will be given actually in the further slides. What you can see in this table in the first row is the work of Fun at all. We look for our categories in their categorization and we calculate the number of the papers in our categories as you can see in the first rows. Other than that, the other papers and the publications are our determination of the legal issues they put forth in this second column you see. We match them with our categorization. And this table goes on like this in other slides as well and there's a total number of uh, publications row at the last row you can see we calculate the numbers of the publication so also you can see the weights of legal issues meant in the lab literature uh, as you can see in this slide the topmost issue with 31 percent is intellectual property and model ownership and it's followed by contractual relationships and responsibility of parties <clears throat> and contract coordinating and control of the design then style of care and then the, finally legal stage of model and to do 3d utilization for standard of care first of all uh, it indicates that an architect or engineer must utilize the same level of care with the professions of their expertise in the same circumstances while giving services about and related to their duty of care. Every new technology actually later adopted to the sector and then becomes a standard. For example, the number of uh, the number of errors uh, are now decreased with clash detection. So it's not abrupt to say now expectations are higher from architects when we you know compared with the previous uh, examples. That means being created in expectations. And these expectations become new standards. However, these standards are not yet decided by a protocol or any contract document, but they can be defined by the courts, as mentioned in Asman Azbek 2012. Moreover, the perception of this time of, of care can create reliance issues. Apart from software reliance issues, uh, collaborators should rely on each other's work since there is a continuous information flow throughout the project. There is a uh, reliance plays an important role in here. Designers take too much uh, input from others and still try to satisfy the needs of their duty of care. Thus, BIM alters the way also how the doctrine of privity protects the designers of the project. The doctrine of property of contract preserves parties from being sued by third parties who have not direct contractual relationship with them. Inevitably, this conversation um, on the start of care brings a compensation problem as well. As the risk and the expectation shifted towards the designers, it is reasonable for them to expect a monetary compensation. This, this, this issue is also being discussed in the literature. So when we look for the intellectual property rights and model ownership, what we can see is information becomes more comprehensive with BIM. Models are three-dimensional and intelligent. They contain detailed physical and functional information and the transmission of data has you know, increased. Then everyone provides information into the model. There may be more than one opinion uh, actually regarding to ownership, first of all, some may argue that the owner of the information is the creator of that information, as you can see in the first step. Or, in a similar way, the owner of the information can grant a perpetual right of li use license to another party to use the, the information in relation to that specific project, such as calculations, fabrications, or marketing purposes, etc. In contrast, another view can argue that Collaborators producing information must grant all right and ownership of the model to the owner or employee. And moreover, uh, about intellectual property, if, even if architects give license to use the model to the contractor, another party or even a competitor 
in their field. Later you can access that information that the creator party wants to protect its intellectual property rights. Confidential trade secrets also are now easier to access and it is more difficult to detect which user or a third party that is not directly involved in the contract reads that information as things are done now in digital, digital digitalized environment. It's also an important problem that a party can reach and use a family or an element created by another collaborator who has spent hours, or man hours, person hours and days while creating them. Worse than that, the ways of protecting rights such as copyright are related to the protection of a unique product, so it is not applicable to universal and not exclusive, we can say, products such as BIM elements. So for contractual relationships and responsibility of parties, BIM arranged the contractual relationships of the parties differently from the conventional procurement methods. Subcontractors or contractors involved in the early stages of the project generally and have direct impact on the project from early stages. And also it creates BIM, creates new roles like BIM coordinator, BIM manager, BIM modeler, etc. Which, which are new to the sector. Uh, everyone also involves in, in others' procedures. This may cause avoidance of responsibility under means and methods. Traditionally, a contractor is a charge in a charge of the means and methods of uh, even he is or he or she is not obliged to use the plans and specifications supplied by the employer. They are you know in charge of their means and methods, normal procurement methods. So for coordination and control of the design, in traditional construction, the architect is responsible for the design. But the way of designing uh, is changing with BIM. As you know, there is more than one contributor to design, from manufacturer to director. Therefore, the responsibility and the control of the design may go beyond to the control of the architect or engineer. This can be followed from the, actually from rules of conduct of National Council of Architectural Registration Boards, NCARB. They defined the borders uh, of re reasonable control of architects in 2018. Again, they made it clear that there can be some inputs beyond the control of the architect. The control and coordination is important from schematic design to as a good phase. In every milestone uh, for all users of BIM, it is important to have a negotiated level of LOD, level of development, to not to face with reliance issues, as mentioned uh, prior to this slide, not to cause an inefficiency during the design phase. Also, inclusion of end users to satisfy their needs, which is the point of the use of PIN, and need, the need while determining LODs is also important about this topic. So for legal stages of PIN, uh, the legal stages of the model can vary from project to project. While in some, it is a, not a contract document but used part, between parties to, and, and does not submit to agencies to you know, take some approvals, it is a co-contract document in which it governs the affairs, just affairs between the parties, the contracted parties. Uh, or an inferential document, for example, in which the model stands for only visualization purposes. In this application, the procedure of one model is not obliged to validate the integrity and accuracy of the model they provide, but this responsibility stays with the receiver of the model, so they cannot actually directly rely on the sub submission. In order to facilitate that use, the coordinator of the collaboration process describes the geometric rules and 3D design and construction-related information to the downstream contributor. This is called accommodation document. The priority of the, of the model receiver actually is that the model he receives is reliable for his own use. From this point of view, it is uh, uh, from this point if it's the shared information is just information only, instead of producing a model from these in inputs, the users only refer to this information and create their own model by using original 2D documents, and which create actually inefficiency and uh, undermine the collaboration process. So lastly, for 2D, 3D utilization category, as the sector moves towards the BIM, traditional 2D design documents are, or projects of buildings are wanted to be converted in 3D models, as you know. 
While this conversation takes place, the required LOD of、uh, should be defined very well. Sometimes the conversion from 2D to 2D can cause a validation problem for the quality of the model, since the handovers generally are made on 2D formats、uh, to, you know, agencies, for example. Also, it may be ambiguous which model should have the priority in such circumstances where there is a conflict between 2D and 3D documents. So this also should be defined very well. And may cause a problem. So when we、uh, move on to conclusions,、uh, firstly, the demand for BIM will increase eventually. But in order to utilize BIM in a more effective way, it is important to have knowledge and awareness of its legal potential legal problems. This six category is mentioned in this paper summarizes the whole picture of the related literature in the field. On the other hand. As the implementation of BIM procedures has increased, institutions around the world have published a number of protocols and standard forms of contracts aimed at, at envisioning and covering these possible legal issues. However, as mentioned by Aronsman Uzbek 2012 and Ida et al. 2015. BIM could not be tested since there was no case law in the courts. From this point of view, however, when we look for the construction project, building information model, and BIM keywords、uh, in searched by legal, which is a, a case law database for USA, it is found that there are twelve cases which can be correlated with BIM in the USA by using the same keywords. For UK, in Bailey, it's a, you know, the database for case law in you know UK. It has been seen that there are four BIM related case law in UK. Thus, a total of 16 cases have been seen on the courts of these two BIM leading countries, and you can see them in this、um, graph. They increase、uh, the the total number is 16 in 2020. At the, the top year is 2018. The, the USA has seen very related issues with, with them in their courts. So in this way, the detailed examination of these cases will not only characterize the root causes of legal cases, but also provide data to prevent possible future legal problems while using BIM. Actually, uh, we uh, also studied uh, in this area. With our co-authors, and we try to explore in detail this the case law area of the SPIM. Here are my reference list. If you are interested, it goes on like this. And here I end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please、uh, do ask them. Do mail mail them.、Uh, thank you very much.